Good morning, everybody. Okay, today we're going to actually read three chapters. Two of them are very, very short, um, but after each chapter, I will ask you a question and then start the next chapter. Okay, um, chapter 43, Set the World on Fire. After the teasing that Albert has taken for his shirt, Keisha and I decide to do something for him. The teasing hasn't seemed to bother him that much, but it bothers us. So we made our own shirts to go with his. We walk up behind him while he is organizing his papers into piles. Albert, do you like our shirts? I ask. He turns around and stares at me with a shirt that says steel and Keisha with a shirt that says magnesium. I think it's the first time I've ever seen Albert truly confused. Okay, Keisha says, get it? They match your shirt, but not the genius guy alone on the rock in space with his robots things, because I told you I thought that was a bit creepy. Albert is still confused, so I interrupt. The shirts, match, the shirts match because the three of us together are going to set the world on fire, like Mr. Daniel says. Yes, he says. Flint, steel, magnesium are commonly used together to, for fire starters. I get it. The corner of Albert's mouth twitches, which is like something, which is like someone else doing cartwheels down the hallway. Without thinking, I yell to Shay across the room. Hey, you tease one of us, you tease all of us. Shay has an expression like she's just smelled rotten meat, and it makes Keisha and me laugh really hard. Then I pat Albert on the back. Just wanted you to know that you can always count on us. Well, that would make you feel... I'm sorry. Well, that would make you either a set of fingers or an abacus. Uh, Albert, seriously? Keisha shakes her head and leans forward. It means we think you're a cool dude. We're allies, I smile. He goes back to rearranging his papers. Yes, I know, he says softly. I am most grateful. All right, so that was chapter 43. So set the world on fire. Why do you think the author named that chapter Set the World on Fire? Give me your opinion. Write it down. Uh, you can push pause if you need to. And when you unpause, we will start chapter 44. Okay, chapter 44, Tales of a Sixth Grade Something. Travis drives me to school because the project I did for our book report is too hard to take on the bus. I've always used my art for projects at school. But this is a three-dimensional scene on a piece of wood. A scene from Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, the book that Mr. Daniels gave me to read. What's gotten into you, Travis asks, since when do you smile like that on a Monday morning? I'm going to, fe I'm going to school feeling proud for once, so I just sit there, continuing to smile. Hey, he says, hitting me on the side of my leg. I'm happy to see you're happy about school. He laughs a little. To be honest, I wouldn't mind feeling some of that. When I get to class, lots of kids surround me. I guess it's because the project is so big. Shay is the first to come over. She looks at the kitchen scene. I have made mostly of paper, including a working light over the sink that Travis helped me make. How did you do that? Shay asked, pointing at the light over the, uh, the light over the sink. There's a battery underneath. She looks disgusted. And you made that? Oliver comes over and grabs the light. Cool! Before I can move, he knocks the wire, which makes the light go off. Shay begins. Oliver, you're such a... Leave him alone, I interrupt. If I don't care, you shouldn't. Shay and Oliver are both wide-eyed, but diff for different reasons. Oliver smiles a little. It's okay, Oliver. Oliver, I will fix it. Shay is squinty-eyed for a bit and then laughs in a way that is louder than normal. She's pointing at my project. I read that book like four years ago, and there aren't any soldiers in it, she says, pointing at a picture hanging on the wall of the room I made. Max comes over. What's up? She has a picture in here that has nothing to do with the book. Book report, Allie. Should be about the book. Well, I say, feeling a little warm all of a sudden. Most houses have art on the walls, so I figured I'd decorate the room, and I drew a picture of my dad in his uniform. Wait, Max brightens up. Your dad is in the army? Yeah. That's cool. What does he do? He's a captain with a tank division. Your father drives tanks? Seriously? That's awesome. I look up. Thanks. He holds up his fist to fist bump me, and as he walks away, he tells the other guys about my dad. From the look on Shay's face, she can tell that her insult backfired on her. Then Mr. Daniels comes over. He's wearing a tie with books on it. Wow, Allie, that's amazing. 
He leans for work forwards and drops his voice. I'm really proud of you. My response is stuck in my throat. I watch a series of movies in my head, trying to see a time when a teacher has said that to me, and there isn't one. Allie, he says. Still, I can't speak. Usually, when I find myself unable to speak, it's because I'm humiliated. I like this feeling a lot more. All right, so that was chapter 44. So it's kind of feels like Allie is starting to fight back against Shay and definitely not with Fist, but kind of making Shay feel like she's not in control and in charge of them anymore. So there's a difference between being rude and bossy and, you know, Allie having this voice. How can I tell the difference between being rude and bossy and Allie kind of sticking up and defending herself? So give me a sentence or two about that. Uh, if you need to, you can hit pause. When you unpause, I am going to start chapter 45. Chapter 45, My Brother's Question. I'm working on pictures of cupcakes that talk for an ad campaign for Keisha's business. She asked me to help her. It feels great to have someone ask me for help. As I draw, I think about my sketchbook and how I love it, but don't draw on it as much anymore. I used to, It used to be the only thing that made me happy. Now I have other things. I hear Travis chewing gum in the doorway before I see him. Without looking up, I say, Mom told you to stop chewing gum like a goat. The whole room is not supposed to hear you. He goes silent. Kind of weird. I finish erasing a line and look over at him. He looks kind of stiff, hands stuffed in his pockets. Then he takes out one hand and brushes his chin with his fist. Travis, what's wrong? I just wanted to ask you a question. You want to borrow some money or something? He does that half smile of his and shakes his head, but I can see this is serious. You can ask me anything you want, Travis. What is it? He comes over and sits on the side of the bed. That teacher of yours, Mr. Daniels, what does he do after school with you? You mean chess? He shakes his head. No, the reading. What does he do? I mean, do you just sound out words and stuff? I put down my pencil. Well, we talk about words, but it's not the same as other teachers. Like, we never use paper, ever. He has me write letters in blue or pink sand, or sometimes in shaving cream. Really? So, you can read now? Well, not yet, but it's getting easier. It can be like running up the side of a building sometimes. I get so tired, but I am doing better. So it helps, what he does. Yeah, it's more fun than learning the old way. Sometimes it's just boring because... He'll do a list of words that have some of the same letters in them, like light, might, and night. He writes the letters that repeat in every word in red and the rest in black. Then he makes the words into pictures so I can remember them better. I flip my paper over. Here, I'll show you. And I write sun, with all these little lines around it pointing outward like the sun. And that really helps you remember it. Yeah, and he also has these sheets of plastic that I can see through. Uh with different colors. He puts those over pages and makes the headaches better. It's like turning the brightness down on a computer. It's kind of weird. No more headaches from reading, really? Well, I still get them, but they're not nearly as bad. Like a little stick hitting my head compared to a baseball bat. Travis smiles and stands up. Well, I'm glad it's he he's helping you. And I'm glad that you and Keisha and Albert squirt. I'm, and I'm glad that you have Keisha and Albert squirt. You're doing great. You're doing great too, Travis. Not long before you'll open up Nickerson Restoration, right? He nods once and turns to leave. He doesn't talk about the neon sign he'll have, or the big rolling tool case, or anything. I miss hearing his mouth running like a motor about all his plans. Travis? He turns. Yeah? I could try to help you. Nah, he says, brushing his chin with his knuckles. I don't need you to do that. I was just wondering. All right, so that's the end of chapter 45. And that one was a lot about Travis, her brother. Um, why do you think Travis is asking Allie about all this reading stuff? Why do you think he wants or maybe even needs to know about that? Um, is there anything in this book so far that you've heard about Travis that might make you think that he has maybe a reading issue too? Um, so jot down any notes about what you think, why you think Travis is asking, um, and if you think he might have some reading issues too. Okay, and then send those to me, Miss Whitener. Talk to you later. Bye.